Hello everyone, my name is Blanca Rangel and I'm going to be solving problem 285 from night. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. Okay. So let's go over together. The Starship Enterprise returns from a warp drive to ordinary space with a forward speed of 50 kilometers per second. To the crew's great surprise, a cleaner ship is 100 kilometers directly ahead, traveling in the same direction at a mere 20 kilometers per hour per second. Without evasive action, the Enterprise will overtake and collide the Klingons in just over three seconds. The Enterprise computers react instantly to pick the ship. What magnitude does the acceleration Enterprise needs to barely avoid collision with Klingon ship? Okay. So we have Enterprise, ship, and we have a Klingon ship. So at this point, when time, we have time initial, it's like we take a picture of this. This object, Enterprise, is going at 50 kilometers per second. This one is going at 20 kilometers per second. And they are at a distance. Not at a distance. They said that our enterprise ship is at zero meters. And at this point of time, Enterprise Klingon is at a hundred meters. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here what we have to understand before solving this problem is what will happen if I'm driving a vehicle at 60 miles per hour? Let's say something that we can all relate. And all of a sudden, the car in front of me is going at 40 miles per hour. And I cannot change lanes. So what do you do? The, it comes to a point, you have to reduce your speed this card is not going to reduce its speed. It's not going to increase or reduce its speed, but you can. So here, if you're this vehicle, I'm going to put here you. You're going to try to make your speed the same to equal or less than 40, so you don't crash the car. So this point of time, your speeds are different. But at this second point in time, you're going to be riding his tail and you're going to have the same speed. So that's one point that we need to understand this problem is that in order to not crash, you need to reduce to the same speed. And that I'm going to put it as as terms. So final velocity of enterprise needs to be the same as the niche of the final velocity Klingon. Since Klingon is going to maintain the same speed the whole time is the initial velocity Klingon. So this is our first clue that the problem is giving us. This is barely avoid collision. So it's going to be riding his tail. So if, if it is going to be riding his tail, it's going to be, they're going to be at a point in time where both are in the same position. Both will be at the same position at the end. So that means final position of enterprise equals final position of Klingon. OK, so these are two clues really important that are going to help us solve this problem. So let's go back to the to enterprise. So I'm going to mark everything that's been given. Going to have all the data for enterprise in blue. And all the data for Klingon in green. 
So Okay. And clean on. That's K for clean on. Okay. So the enterprise is going to start at a position of zero meters. And it's going to end, we don't know where. The answer is not 100 meters because this car is going to keep moving too. So Klingon is a starting at 100 meters, but we don't know where it's going to end. But we know that they both are going to end at the same time, at the same point. Initial velocity is 50 kilometers per second. This one is 20 kilometers per second. The final velocity of Enterprise, we don't know. Oh wait, we do. Final velocity of Enterprise, it's gonna be the same as initial velocity, it's gonna be 20 kilometers per second. And final velocity, Klingon is 20 kilometers per second. It's gonna remain the same. So acceleration, we don't know. Time that it takes to stop, we don't know it. Acceleration for Klingon, zero. Time that it stops, we don't know. But we know it's the same time. Since time, all of this is happening exactly the same time, we only need one variable for time. Okay. So we're looking for Final position enterprise equals final position cleaning. We're looking for acceleration enterprise. And we don't have time. So let's look at our kinematic equations. So here kinematic equations are final position equals initial position plus velocity time plus one half acceleration times square. Final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration time. Final velocity square equals initial velocity square plus 2a delta x. Mm -hmm. So we want to know, we know that final position is going to be equals to final position. So this problem Here's a spoiler alert. We're going to need a system of equations. Since we have so many unknowns, we're going to end up with a system of equations. Going to move a little bit down so we can continue. There you go. So we're going to look for our first equation, then our second equation. So we know that final position enterprise equals the final position Klingon. So I'm going to use this equation for both. So final position, however spelled Klingon, it's final position equals initial position, position velocity time plus one half, solution time square. This goes to zero. Final position clean, essential position plus BOT. Then we do the same for enterprise. Final position enterprise. If you notice, I'm grading in blue. Initial position enterprise plus initial velocity enterprise time plus one half station time square. So here, this is zero. So I have XFE equals XFK. So I'm going to equal these two equations. So I have 
XO plus BOT equals BOET is one half solution times square. This is Klingon, Klingon. Perfect. So we have our first equation for our system of equations. Let's do the second one. Do we know we got this one from our first clue or for second clue? Positions are going to be the same at the end. For the second clue, we're going to use this equation. So we know that we're going to use blue for clinging. Velocities are the same. Final position are the same, velocities are the same. So final velocity enterprise equals initial velocity enterprise plus acceleration time. So if that's true, this is going to be equal to final velocity clinging, which is equal to final initial velocity clinging. So in this case, I'm going to make this. Initial velocity clinging equals for initial velocity enterprise plus acceleration time. So this is my second system of equations. Now I have two equations. So you can solve this system of equations in different ways. I'm going to solve it by substitution. So I'm going to take the equation two, substitute and uh, solve for time. So that's BOK minus BOE over acceleration equals time. And substitute this definition of time in this equation. I'm going to solve for this number so that way it's, I can simplify it better. So I have final po initial position clinging equals negative initial position clinging, initial velocity clinging times time plus initial velocity enterprise times time plus one half acceleration times square. In order to make this easier, mm, okay, we're gonna go that in a second. Okay, so I have these two are sharing a T. So I have parenthesis minus B O K plus B O E time plus one half acceleration time square. OK, now I'm going to define BOK minus BOE, initial velocity enterprise minus initial velocity. Initial velocity Klingon minus initial velocity enterprise is going to be changing velocity. So that way it just looks a little bit easier. So time equals changing velocity over acceleration. OK. So initial position clinging equals to this minus BOK plus BOE. It's the same. So they change signs. So it's going to be minus changing B. So minus changing B time. And we said that time is changing time over acceleration, changing time, changing velocity over acceleration plus one half acceleration, changing velocity over acceleration square. So we get rid of time. Now we can solve for the rest of the variables. So, okay. So these two are going to multiply minus 
so minus delta delta velocity square. The negative is going to stay outside. Minus neg negative mm -hmm. over acceleration plus. So this is going to be equals to delta B square over A square. This one cancels with this one. Over delta B square over 2A. I'm going to multiply this times 2, 2 over 2. So 2 over 2 equals 1. So I'm not changing the equation. So I'm going to have 2 minus 2 delta B square over 2A plus delta B square over 2A. Same denominator, I can add them together. So I'm going to have minus delta B square over 2A. If I change this back, it's going to be minus B O K minus B O E square over 2A. So this is our solve system of equations. And now we only have to solve a problem and find acceleration. Find acceleration. You technically find an equation where we have all of the variables that they give us. So we can solve this problem. I'm going to uh, I'm going to multiply times 2 times a on both sides and divide by x ok on both sides. So I have acceleration equals minus initial velocity Klingen minus initial velocity enterprise square over 2 times the initial position of Klingen. So now we plug this in in our numbers. We have minus 20 times 10 to the 3, minus 50 times 10 to the 3 square, over 2 times 100 times 10 to the 3. Why am I putting times 10 to the 3? Since we have our Since we have that there are 50 kilometers per second, the suffix kilo K stands for a thousand or 10 to the three. Okay, going back. So we have acceleration equals to minus thousand kilometers per second square or minus, oops, this is meters per second or minus 4.5 kilometers per second square. So here's our answer. If you have any more questions, feel free to contact me or the professor. Thank you.